All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, of her adultery. All the nations. <laughs> Even my grandma in a little village somewhere in the Middle East, she's got TikTok. <laughs> They all drank of the wine of her of her fornication, of the wrath of her fornication. Everybody's got now internet and Wi-Fi. Even in the villages, go and milk the cow. What do you want the iPhone and the Galaxy for? Everywhere. I remember till now. I was I was going um, somewhere. I, through, uh, by plane and I'm sitting at the gate awaiting the um, to board on you know to board the plane so just a thought came I said I'm gonna turn around I just want to see how many people are talking to each other face to face none with all the people that were in that airport b believe me literally literally Every single one had their head down while walking as well, not just sitting. Oh. Habibi, do look. What's this? Sometimes when I walk in the airport, I'm trying to avoid them. They keep on coming my way because they're not looking, they're looking into the screen. Everyone, all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Yes, Mammon, the false god. People denied God for money and wealth, fame. The dollar sign became the false god, even in the church. Money became God. We sold Christ like Judas Iscariot did for money. Today, even in the church, we are buying and selling in the name of the Lord, trading in the house of the Lord because I want to be rich because money brings me power and power brings me people. I'll make them bow before me. Wow, where is the power of the Holy Spirit? You know, I'll leave you with this. The day of St. Peter's Basilica was being opened. The Vatican. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about uh, the Catholic Church, okay? I'm not, so please. Today, like, I'm really scared what to say because everything I say, they are holding against me. So relax, please. The day the St. Peter's Basilica was being opened, this is true story, this is history. Of course the Pope is there, there's cardinals, bishops, from all over the world have come. Magnificent structure. So anyway, while they're all there and, and then one of, one of the bishops or the archbishop stood up and said, Pope, said yes. He said, today I can stand with my head up high and proudly say, the day that I say I have no gold or silver is gone. Look at the structure. It is all built with gold and silver and precious stones. That day where I say I have no gold or silver to give you, that day is long gone, Pope. Being proud about it. You know what he was saying here? He is talking against Simon Peter when he said to that paralytic man at the beautiful gate, the temple of Jerusalem, when Simon saw him paralyzed, unable to move, unable to work, he came back and said to him, gold and silver I have not, but one thing I have, and I'm giving it to you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. So this lost soul cardinal said the day is gone Pope to say I have no gold and silver 
But the Lord has witnesses all the time, every time. Another cardinal stood up from the other side and he said, Pope, will you allow me to rip answer my brother? He said, please do. He said, my dear friend and brother, it is so sadly also I can say the day is gone when I can say in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. That day is long gone too, my dear friend. Because the day you worship money, the day Christ has walked away from the church. It became a den of thieves and a trading place, a supermarket. Where is the day we say in Jesus mighty name, get up and walk, that day is gone. Because we're not worshiping the Lord, we're worshiping material. Material. Material, my beloveds. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. My goodness. The trades they make with America, with the United Nations, America. Oh. Sound of Freedom, that movie. 850,000 innocent children disappear from America every single year for some sick in the head people. And then they want to tell me the government is not aware of this. 40,000 children disappear from Australia. And the government hides it because they are corporates with it. They have committed adultery, fornication. And then church leaders come out proudly and say, listen to the government. The government is from God. No, it's from Satan. This kind of government is from Satan. Don't you ever offend God. When God puts a government, he will put a government that will protect the freedom and the dignity of humanity, not enslave humanity. Who enslaves people? Satan. Corona in 2020 was an enslavement of humanity. But you see, the Lord allows it, even though it's not his will, but he allows it because he's saying to all of us, my children have walked away from me. If you walk away, Satan will control you. You need to come back. You need to come back. Why are you going to the wrong places for the wrong reasons? Come back to me, my child, and I will set you free. I will set you free. I will set you free. I pray the next United States of America's president, which is 24, the elections. I know some people are not going to like this, but I pray it's going to be Donald Trump. But one thing I'll say, out of the entire presidents in the history of America, no one promised one thing and he did, except Donald Trump. I don't care. Everyone, no one is perfect, by the way. So if you're going to judge this person, well, judge yourself. Because everyone is a sinner. The only one who's perfect in the flesh is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Period. He is the only perfect Lamb of God. But you tell me, which president? Yet he was being persecuted throughout his, his term. No one ever was persecuted the way this man was throughout those four years, maybe not even four years. They gave him hell. Yet, when he said, I'll build the, I'll build the wall and I'll make Mexico pay for it, he did. When he said, I will, I will bring America back to, it, to, her, to its you know, uh, glory, he did. He brought a lot of businesses back. It flourished. Everything flourished within a very short time. But I want to see this man one-on-one -on -one behind closed doors with no detectives. <laughs> I want to talk to him. I want to see him five minutes. Say one thing to him and then leave him. 
But believe you me, if Trump is not the next president, it's not about Trump again, it's the Lord. If Trump is not the president of America next year, kiss America goodbye, Christians will be trampled underfoot. Because the next superpower will persecute the Christians. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's not about Trump, it's about the Lord. He becomes the president of America, I'll be the prime minister of Australia. Um, when I become the prime minister of Australia, to all my beloved men with tattoos and big muscles, get ready because one of you will be the minister of transport. <laughs> The other one will be the Minister of Interior and the other one Exterior. I'll make you all, all the boys because they are men. You know? Yeah. They are real men. You know what I can't stand? Someone is a man but is a wussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really upset. You know, those who deal with drugs and you see them in the street punching on and kicking, doing, they're real men. When they say, I hate you, they say it in your face, behind your back. They are not one thing in your face, another differently and behind your back. The politicians are not men because they say one thing in front of your face, totally different behind your back. So I want to bring once for a change, real men who say we love you in your face and hate you in your face and behind your back. Now these men should run the country. So big boys, get ready. <laughs> and if I be the prime minister, I'll sack every politician. I, I won't say, oh, well, let's vote. What vote? Get out of my sight. I'll bring the people, I'll select them. I'll bring the Christian ethics and laws and morals back to the country. And I will get rid of all the evil laws that they have introduced in 24 hours. And then I'll cut off the grants from those so-called Christians who were very weak during lockdowns. No more grants for you. Get out. I want real Christian leaders, real men. I'll give the grants to real men, not cowards. And then they can kill me. I've done my part. But I'll appoint someone else that will come in my place. And you'll have your freedom then. And we will protect all the, all the minorities' freedoms as well, but within guidelines. This is a Christian country. And the Lord taught me to love my neighbor. My neighbor can be an atheist, can be a Muslim, can be a Buddhist, can be anyone. I'll give them my life. But morals, ethics, values, and we will bring back family values. It will be taught on every national television, on every network, in every school, in every educational department. We will bring family values because this is the Western world that destroyed family value. It'll have to be brought back. Without family value, there is no God. Because God is family. You remove family, you're removing God from your life. All you're going to ask for is absolute hell. Demons dwelled in that place where they spoke in the name of human rights. Demons are dwelling there. We need the Lord. We need God in our life. We need Him. We pray, my beloveds. We pray the Lord comes back and fixes everything. We pray the Lord changes everything. We are too tired. We are heavy burdened. Lord, have mercy on your church. Have mercy on this world. One more time, Lord, we beg you. Change this evilness. Decimate it. Plug it from its roots. Bring back your holiness. Bring back your light. Bring back your righteousness. Bring back your glory. Bring back the day of dignity. And bring back the true humanity, Lord. Bring back the true identity of what a human is supposed to be. Enough of this evil. Enough of this filth. Enough. 